giving the opportunity. So I'm Heike Feldsman, I work in NUI Galway. I'm based in philosophy. I don't really do philosophy, I do applied ethics um, around I ICT ethics in particular. Um, so what is that? Application of ethical principles, code of practice, standards of good practice, wider issues um, to ICT applications and also the research process. Um, some of the ethical principles, I think, that are important to keep in mind, respect for autonomy, so choice of um, different stakeholders, non-maleficence is doing no harm to different stakeholders, beneficence, trying to achieve something of value, which is basically what we hear about, and, um, and justice. So non-discrimination, um, other issues around kind of what is fair. Um, it needs to be really ethical concerns are usually in the ICT field are really considered very, very closely together with um, legal requirements, so especially data protection, but also potentially other requirements. So the incoming data protection regulation is a big deal that needs to be taken into account together with kind of the more general issues. Um, in terms of where to embed this in the debate, well, big data analytics, algorithmic decision making are raise a lot of ethical challenges and um, that's part of my job to consider. Um, I'm working as part of a research cluster on technology and governance at the Whitaker Institute at NYG and um, at the Center of Bioethical Research and Analysis as well. So just to give you a bit of the background. Um, don't crowd your slides. Uh, I'm very sorry I did. Uh, <laughs> so the reason for that was I had different slides until I found that the um, that the, what's it called, the template we got looked rather different. So I'm not going to run you through all of this. So in terms of, maybe just in terms of the challenges, so respecting stakeholder autonomy, what does that involve? Well, if we have learning analytics running in the background, you have kind of dependency and power disparities between the organization and users, so how can you achieve transparency, for example, that people know what is going on? Um, prevention of harm, so what can you do in order to ensure that nothing bad comes of um, using a system that's targeted towards something good? So avoiding disadvantages arising from the use of data and um, the resulting classification. So if you're uh, classified as being in the at-risk category, what does that mean? Kind of can that, does that come with any negative impact um, on those people, even though we do that in order to help them? Um, Safeguarding against data protection breaches, realistic assessment of de-identification solutions, for example, is something really important. So anything uh, relating to data protection really needs to be considered in that context. Benefit. We've all talked here about the value. We're all hoping for value from data analytics, but don't overstate or simply assume benefits without the evidence. So we really need a reasonable evidence base on um, before we can make those claims. And then in relation to just as well, the potential for unfair discrimination, I think, is something that um, needs to be considered. Um, a lot of ethical reflection is really kind of fairly differentiated, so I, um, I didn't want to bother you with that, so just to give you a little bit of a general in uh, input. So what I think would be important to um, consider for the future, well, considering ethical concerns in the implementation of learning analytics in Ireland, um, is really important to build trust and avoid reputational risk. So I think kind of it is part of governance. So to, to really think about ethical considerations at every part of this pyramid um, is something that should be done. It's not something that comes into place at the very end when we talk about um, user satisfaction. It really comes into place already when you decide what kind of parameters to capture and what to do with them. Um, yeah. So maybe consider development and adoption of a code of practice for learning analytics in the Irish higher education context um, could be something. So there's some very helpful GISC resources that might help in doing something like that. Um, yeah, that's as much as I want to say today. Okay, thank okay. you. <laughs>